Let's begin. This tutorial requires beginner to intermediate skills, takes about one to one and a half hour to prep and about one hour to apply. The money went into the Elemorph plastic and the soft putty or wax. You can of course create that wax yourself if you want to save that extra money. Alrighty, let's kick this off by blending up some liquid latex and flour because this is needed to create liquid latex paste. When we got the paste ready, smear it on to your face cast or anything round or flat for that matter. We need a surface that's big enough to cover our eye. With a little bit of liquid latex on our fingers, we smooth out the surface and spread that paste out. This is gonna be the base for the honeycomb pattern in our beehive prosthetic. Of course, with a face cast, you will get a superb match and fit to your face, but creating it on a flat surface should do the trick as well. That latex needs to set a bit before we create the honeycomb pattern. So in the meantime, let's create the bees. We are using black alimorph plastic, pour it into hot water. After a few seconds, the pellets turn clear and they are ready to use. So we scoop them up and we cut off a tiny piece here to be used as the head and the body. And to separate them a little bit, we make a little dent, just like that. It kind of looks like two pieces. And when it's done, make a whole bunch of them. But for this to really look like a bee, we need a tail as well. And for that, we're using yellow alimorph plastic. The method is exactly the same. Scooping up that warm, clear plastic and we create something sort of like a little bean, if you will. And we simply push that onto the head and the body that we created earlier. Just like that. Since the plastic is warm, the pieces will fuse. If they don't, or if the tail piece falls off, just add a little bit of glue there to keep it in place. You can of course get your hands on this plastic in our shop at elimorph.com. It's super affordable, but if you can't get your hands on it, you can create these bees using clay as well. And of course, we need to give that tail a little bit of attention with the black paint there to get those stripes in place. And we are using basic nail polish. You can use any kind of black color you got. Of course, bees without wings are not bees. So let's create the wings using a tiny piece of clear plastic. Cutting out two small wings for each of our bees and then attach them using glue. And look at that. Those little bees are starting to look pretty awesome. Still waiting for our prosthetics to dry a little bit more. Let's create our own little tool to create that honeycomb pattern. So again, using Elemorph plastic, we roll out like a little stick like this and then we work the top of it to give it that hexagon shape that we need for that honeycomb pattern. If you're having trouble getting the shape right or if you don't have any Elemorph plastic, the absolutely easiest way to get that honeycomb pattern is with an Allen wrench or the backside of a pen because they both have that hexagon shape we need. Dip your stamp, pen or Allen wrench in liquid latex and stamp into that prosthetic we created earlier. Our prosthetic has dried about an hour before we started stamping and that seems to be pretty okay. Using this method we're not gonna get those super sharp hexagon shapes there but it's gonna look very natural and suit this look perfectly. Before we leave all this to dry overnight we smooth the edges a little bit using liquid latex on our fingertips. And the shout goes to Lind SFX or Lindsay V, 14 years old, creating a lot of weird stuff and some nasty intestines. Go check it out, give her a follow. Back in the studio with a dried up prosthetic, let's paint it. We are using alcohol based colors, you can of course use any kind of colors you got. And we start with a yellow base coat here, that was probably to be expected. And then we switch that up to go over the edges with a bit of orange. Gonna be a lot of layers here. 
Next up, additional depth to each of those tiny cells using a darker tone there. Then using a sponge, we go over all the edges one more time with yellow. Next layer of yellow. And with that in place, additional detailing using an even darker tone in the absolute center there of each of the cells. And we top it all off with yet another layer of yellow. With that honeycomb prosthetic looking awesome, let's take it off. And for that, of course, we line the whole thing with powder and we gently peel it off and apply powder as we peel or the latex will stick to itself. There we go. With the prosthetic off, we trim all those edges until we got something looking like this. But of course, before we can attach this, let's protect our eyebrows there with a little bit of Vaseline or oil to keep it from sticking into the latex. And speaking of which, let's line that prosthetic with liquid latex or skin adhesive if you are more comfortable with that. Put it in place. For additional hold, we line that prosthetic with a skin adhesive. Let's go over it like that. Right now we have a lot of edges. We really need to fade this beehive into our skin. And to do that, we are gonna be using soft putty. This is basically like wax. So we shape a little string. And we put that around the edge of our prosthetic. And with oil on our fingertips to make this a lot smoother to work with, we gently fade that soft putty or wax out into the skin. With that soft putty fading out into our skin, we now have a great surface to create the illusion of that beehive fading out as well. We go in and make little holes there, extending that beehive out, creating the illusion that it actually fades right out into the skin. Then we go in with a sealer to set that soft putty and to give it a nice little surface there to make it a lot easier to paint. And speaking of paint job, we need a much lighter tone here on the skin to give this beehive a more popping effect and to flirt a lot more with American Horror Story. In our case, as you saw, this is a uh, foundation. But as usual, use any kind of colors you got to achieve the result you want. With that base coat in place, let's go back in there with a sponge and some yellow to actually extend that beehive out into the skin. Color-wise as well. There we go. Dabbing that on there, gently fading it out. And of course, setting it all with some translucent powder. Next up, the same kind of detailing work on the colors that we did on the prosthetic before. We need that paint job to extend out into those little holes. And with those details in place, let's get some shape back to our face after all that foundation. Shading our cheekbones, temples, jawline and nose. I have a beehive in the middle of my face in Swedish is... Jag har en beekulpa mitt i nullet. course followed by a highlighter.
To connect this look further with the American Horror Story poster shot there, let's use a deep purple here for the lips and then use that same color for that streak going straight over the eye. But we apply it with a tiny brush. Completing the lips with a dash of glossy red. And then it's time to put those bees into place. And since this is a uh, prosthetic, we're actually gonna glue them straight on there. But of course, don't glue them onto your skin. Unless you're using a skin adhesive instead, because then it will be perfectly okay. The look is really starting to come together here, but we need a few more elements before we are done. And we figured a nice blonde wig would look cool with this, so we went for that. Optional for you, of course. And for the last detail with the dripping honey, the camera actually stopped recording when we poured out the hair gel into a bowl. So do that first. Clear hair gel mixed with food color or yellow eyeshadow. Anything kind of yellow you can mix into that hair gel to give it that nice gooey color. Something like that. You can probably use orange marmalade even if you feel like that. It's gonna be sticky, crazy sticky. And that's actually the last step. Applying that honey wherever you want it. Make it drip all over the place or just in tiny areas. It's all up to you, it's your look. And boom, you are ready with your American Horror Story inspired look. A look that we think came out pretty cool and one that you can actually wear if you want to be looking good and nasty at the same time. Without any blood, without any gore. If you like this, give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe and switch on those notifications. Keep those requests coming in the comments because we are picking up more and more of them as we are getting closer to Halloween. Share our videos with the world and we will be back in 3 or 4 days with another awesome look. Love you, bye.